Is the Archaea spellbook really good in God Wars, or is it just trash? Well, let's find out. The new reworked Archaea spellbook has a lot of useful spells right now, and even though it still has some of its old spells, like the Drainer Manor Teleport, it has a lot of really good spells, specifically in the Resurrection spell. In this section, you can resurrect ghosts, skeletons, and zombies. And not only that, you can also get Death Charge, which is going to be very useful in some bosses. The first boss that I want to go over is going to be Armadale. And for Armadale, I'm going to be rocking the Carol's Top, Bottom, Dragon Crossbow, and Twisted Buckler. So if you have better gear, you're going to be having a much better time than me. And in this boss, I'm going to be specifically using the Ghost, Zombie, and the Skeleton to test out which is the best for this boss. And already I'm already screwing off because I forgot my Book of the Dead. And uh, yeah, well, it looks like I have to go back. <laughs> At least I didn't start any of my KC. I only got 40 KC, so that's the only bright side to it. But yep, we're going to have to go back. All right, so now that I remember to bring my Book of the Dead and that I got my KC, the way that I kill Armadale is that I usually resurrect the zombie probably two seconds or three seconds before the boss, and then I make sure that I put my prayer on and attack the boss. As you can see, the zombies or any of the minions will always hit the boss if you are attacking the boss. This makes it pretty uh, AFK, but this also makes it so you can't really use the chins, as in the chin method, you would have to go back and forth, back and forth if you are a solo. So this definitely is uh, really useful if you have another buddy or if you're doloing. But yeah, super AFK here. And it only costs about six prayer points to resurrect. And to be honest, you can use any minion you want. You can even use a zombie, which is a melee, and it could still attack Armado, which is a bit questionable. But hey, you can use whatever you want, so it doesn't really matter. But what does matter is uh, remembering to pray an Armadel, because uh, if you don't, well, doesn't matter which method you use, you're still going to die. <laughs> Shit. And before we get into Sarah Dolman, my dumbass forgot to bring a Book of the Dead, so look, guess who's going to farm more Ikimiku keys? This guy. <laughs> so the method that I'm going to be using on Sarah Dolman is going to be the No Stamina Pot method, which is going to be me ping-ponging the boss. If you guys don't know what I'm saying, you can check out my Sarah Doman guide as I have in the description below. So moving on, I'm going to be using the Resurrection spell since you don't really use any specs for Sarah Doman unless you want to use the Armado Crossbow, but that's not really efficient. So the Resurrection method is going to be the best in slot for this place. And as you can see, the skeletons are hitting Sarah quite often as the skeletons ignore the armor. And this is probably the best thing uh, for Sarah Doman, since Sarah requires a bit of time if you're doloing or soloing. And I can safely say that, hands down, this is probably going to be the best method for Sarah Doman. And even though you can see that I messed up a bit here, I'm still killing Sarah quite fast, even though I don't have a twisted bow. And remember, if you have better armor than me, you're going to be doing a lot of kills way faster than me. So I'm using pretty much budget gear and if you have Armadol or even a Twisted Bow then you're going to be killing the boss way way faster. Dude I forgot my Book of the Dead again are you kidding me? I just got my KC! No! Oh my goodness. Well that's going to be more waste of time and uh yeah guys uh remember to bring your Book of the Dead because <laughs> I'm about to lose my freaking mind right now. Okay, so the one good thing that happened is that I could test out if it's worth even bringing the Wrath Runes to turn the ashes into prayer points. And as you can see, I have 59 prayer points, and I use 3 ashes for 4 prayer points. Yeah, I don't really think that's worth. Let me try again. Let's see if uh, I get more. Uh, I'm going to drop the ashes here. Let's see how much one ash gives. And one ash only gives one prayer point. So it's probably not worth bringing this since it does take up a spot. And it, Wrath Runes are kind of expensive for just one or two prayer points. So 
that's going to be a no for me. So I'm going to be putting Zami and Bandos together because they have the same mechanics, so it makes sense to put them together. And as you can see, I'm not using the Resurrection spell here because I am doloing. But if you are soloing, then you could consider using the Resurrection spell. However, I still think that the Ancient spell is going to be the best in slot if you're soloing because you are going to want to Blood Barrage the minions to get your HP up. If you are dueling, doloing, or trioing, then the Archaea spellbook would be the best in slot since you can use Death Charge to restore 15% of your special attack every single time you kill your enemy. And it's really important to make sure that you also bring Prayer Restore. So in order to bring both of these spellbooks on one account, what you could do is you can have Lunar Spellbook on and make sure that you have the runes to spell swap into the Archaea Spellbook. This way that you can maximize your efficiency to kill the monsters while restoring your prayer and your special attack. So the way that this works is that Death Charge will restore your special attack if you get the last hit on your monster. You do not need to get the most damage, you just need to get the last hit. The only downside to this is that you cannot alk all the uncommon drops or common drops. So this is going to be one downside, but it's definitely worth bringing the Archaeus spellbook. And there it is, this is Amarok Hilt. Easy 2 mil right there. Okay, so I've said a lot of things, so let's do a quick recap. For Armadil and Sarah Dolman, the best of the slot is going to be the Resurrection spell where you resurrect the Greater Skeleton, Ghost, or the Zombie. This is because the Zombie and the Skeleton Ghost will be doing a lot of DPS on the boss since the boss has quite a bit of defensive level since you cannot spec the boss. However, for Zami and Bandos, it is the other way around where you do want to make sure you use Death Charge to gain a lot of spec attacks so you can kill the boss very quick. You don't necessarily need to have the skeleton or the zombie, but if you do find yourself that you need more DPS, then I guess you could bring those runes as well. And a quick bonus for you guys here. Another boss that is very good is Venonatus, since the Archaea spellbook can use the resurrection spell to penetrate Venonatus' high defensive level. This is going to be very good since Venonatus does usually take around a minute or two to kill it solo. But if you guys want to know how to kill it faster, you can actually bring a friend over or dolo, and if you guys don't know how to do this, you can check out my channel to look at the guide. So I'm going to go to the Corporeal Beast, and this is definitely not a guide for a Corporeal Beast since I have the crossbows on. But I just want to demonstrate to you guys how powerful the Resurrection spell is here. As you can see, I summon the ghost, and when I attack the boss, the ghost will also attack with me. Come on, come on. Uh, okay, yes, the ghost is also going to attack with me once it gets in range, and as you can see, even though I didn't spec Corporeal Beast, it's still hitting 1s, 2s, and 3s here. This is going to be very good if you are solo, and imagine how well this is going to be if you have 4 to 5 people doing this boss with the Archaea Spellbook. This is actually going to be insane, and this is going to be probably, if not, the best in slot for this boss as well. The Archaea Spellbook is pretty much going to be best in slot, but there is one thing you do need to watch out. For example, when I exit the gate here, and the Corporeal Beast is coming over, you need to make sure that you summon the Skeleton, or Zombie, or Ghost, inside the Corporeal Beast. This is because that if you do this, the Skeleton won't be able to attack it, since it's outside, and there's not enough room for it to teleport in. But the good side is, the CD is pretty short, so if you do mess up, then I guess you could just wait for a couple of seconds to summon them again. Now here is where I want to share my thoughts, and the reason why is because the skeleton, the ghost, and the zombie don't really have a big difference, and I know that the ghost is magic and the skeleton is range and the zombie is melee, but what is the purpose of having these three spells if they all ignore the bosses or monsters armor? It practically feels like the same thing, unless the monster is completely immune to that certain attack style, which is understandable, but I do feel like the developers can do a little better job with the three spells since it really does feel the same, but who knows, they might update it in the future. But if you guys like this video, hit it with a sub, hit it with a like, and I'll see you guys in the next time. Peace.